Prior to a fatal accident in 2016 that killed two pilots and 11 oil workers in the Norwegian sector of the North Sea, Airbus's Super Puma helicopter was a mainstay of the offshore transportation business. The catastrophic separation of the main rotors from the fuselage gave the flight crew next to no chance of making a safe landing. And this spurred a crisis of confidence in the aircraft, especially in the wake of earlier fatal accidents in Scotland in 2009 and 2013. Working with industry safety experts and accident investigators, Airbus went back to the drawing board in an attempt to fully understand and fix failures in the Super Puma's main gearbox. Now the current H225 version of the large cabin aircraft is back in production and in demand worldwide for multiple missions, albeit still not in the North Sea. One operator making good use of the Super Puma is Texas-based Air Center Helicopters. Air Center Helicopters, along with Airbus, is trying to bring the 225 into other roles, obviously besides the oil and gas role it was more or less created for. And the, the firefighting element is something that's going to be continuing to worsen throughout the whole world. And we, both Air Center and Airbus, see it as an opportunity to use the strengths of this airframe. And it's basically a multi-mission platform. You can transport passengers as a standard category transport. It's good for a heavy lift. It can do firefighting, hoist rescue, medevac, SAR, and all that kind of stuff. So we really see it as a multi-role helicopter, not just in the US, but all over the world. Other new missions include firefighting and keeping space programs functioning. When Boeing and SpaceX sends capsules back in the case of SpaceX, it does go into the sea, but unlike it was in the Apollo days, um, the, the bow comes up and picks up the capsule out of the ocean and then puts it on its deck and we land on, a, on the deck of the boat and then we transport the astronauts and cargo back to the Cape. That mission is day and night, NBG, IFR, pretty much it's gonna happen when it happens. And we do a lot of training, we do day and night deck qualifications. There's a lot of preparation that goes into it. Air Center Helicopters is fully approved to maintain the Super Pumas and trains pilots to operate them. It sources aircraft on the open market and then overhauls and converts them for new missions. We provided them a lot of data we're using these aircraft for a lot of repetitive lift work. And we've been able to come up with a way to let the computer add the torque to it rather than just using your arm and the collective. So the way we've been able to fly it, we've given them thousands of hours of data and tens of thousands of lift data that can show we can operate the aircraft and play with the transmission very nicely. It doesn't even really recognize a torque event. So that data has been helpful for Airbus and for us to be able to continue with it. In addition to its range and payload capability, the amount of space inside the H-225 gives operators plenty of options to equip and deploy the aircraft in multiple roles. It's highly configurable, so we can configure for any mission, whether it's VIP transport or search and rescue or medevac or combination of all that. This one we have here today is kind of Kind of a combo thing where we would do an, put an initial, what they call an initial attack crew in on the fire. So you would have fire crew in there, land them on a ridge, put a bucket out, attach a bucket, and then support the fire crew. Um, should one of them get injured or need medevac, there's a hoist capability and right into a litter kit and then right to a hospital. The Super Puma seems well suited to a company like Air Center Helicopters, which prides itself on taking on challenges that are not for the faint hearted. It seems like the company likes austere environments. That's what they're good at. Um, the original long, long 30 plus year ago start was up in Alaska. So um, yeah, we're, we're, we're outside dogs. 